Welcome, welcome to the Illegally Healed Podcast, bringing you the faith, science, and hope of cannabis extract therapy. Cannabis, cannabis extract therapy. And now your host, Kevin Quinn. Hello and welcome to the Illegally Healed Podcast. My name is Kevin Quinn, and today's show is going to be a great one. We've got an amazing guest on the show for you and a little bit of amazing news to bring to you as well. First, the news on Monday. The Drug Enforcement Administration issued a new rule that increases the U.S. government's production quota for medical marijuana from an annual 21 kilograms to 650 kilograms, and that's almost 1,500 pounds of cannabis in total. The NIDA recently notified the DEA that it required additional supplies of marijuana to be manufactured in 2014 to provide for current and anticipated research efforts involving marijuana. That reads, according to a recent Federal Register statement from the DEA, the statement goes on to specify a production quota of 650,000 grams of pot for the year 2014. However, still under federal law, cannabis remains illegal and classified as a Schedule I drug, meaning they consider it one of the most dangerous substances with no currently accepted medical use. I find that unbelievable. And we've got, on the other side of the world right now, Nobel Prize winning economists saying end the war on drugs. This is according to the Huffington Post today. They just put out an 82 page report titled Ending the Drug War. These economists are saying that the pursuit of a militarized and enforcement led global war on drugs strategy has produced enormous negative outcomes and collateral damage, including mass incarceration, particularly here in our country, the United States, highly repressive policies in Asia, vast corruption, and political destabilization in places like Afghanistan, West Africa, violence in Latin America, even contributing to the HIV epidemic in Russia. When you wrap your mind around what this is doing, you really begin to see just how devastating the war on drugs actually is. And yet, people who believe in the medical benefits of something like cannabis are denied. I'm talking to someone right now on our podcast who I'm sure believes in the medical benefits of marijuana. His name is Roger Martin with Grow for Vets. Thank you so much, Roger, for being on our show today. You're welcome. It's an honor to be on. Thank you. Now, Grow for Vets is offering, I, I, I find this completely unbelievable, free cannabis, pot-infused foods, and growing equipment to Colorado veterans. Is that right? That's correct. And uh, we don't just give them the equipment and tell them good luck. Uh, we actually have grow experts that... Uh, go to their homes and help them set up and maintain, if necessary, uh, their own uh, grow that they have in their homes. That's unbelievable. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved. Is this an organization that you started yourself, Roger? How did this come to be? I'm an Army veteran. Uh, I was on OxyContin for years. I had always thought marijuana was a terrible drug and, uh, you know, have six kids that were all athletes and, you know, not involved in drugs. And so... Um, Anyway, long story short, um, medical cannabis, uh, when I lived in California, uh, had a great deal to do with me being able to stop taking 180 milligrams a day of OxyContin as well as Ambien at night, which allowed me to sleep for about three hours a night. Uh, now I eat a uh, marijuana-infused edible. Uh, before I go to bed, and I'm able to sleep five, six hours every night. I will tell you, as as someone who has suffered from low back pain all my life, someone who has uh, had epilepsy, um, I can tell you that that when when I hear five or six hours of peaceful, restful sleep, I, I think that sounds fantastic. It's a dream come true, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And and you know, some people who don't understand that uh, they they think they they get their eight or nine hours of sleep. It's like no. You know, when you are on massive amounts of opiates, there are so many side effects, and this is a miracle. Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the side effects that really hit me from the OxyContin, as you well know, uh, opiates drain your, your, the calcium from your system. All of a sudden, all my teeth started breaking off, uh, even though I had great teeth to begin with. Uh, by the time I finally went to a, a specialist, I had one tooth left I could chew on. I had 13 abscesses. Uh, the dentist couldn't believe I was alive with all that infection, infection in my mouth. Um, I ended up having full dental implants, so I have 10 titanium posts in my mouth. My teeth snap in and out, but it cost almost $50,000. 
I mean, that's, that, that's another side effect of OxyContin, which I call OxyPoison, actually. But It's true, and, and, and not to belabor the point, but it, the, the side effects of that drug are horrible, and, and there are so many, I'm sure, military veterans going through the same thing, not just the, the ones that have been injured and are on these uh, drugs, but also the ones suffering from post-traumatic stress. And we've, we've seen the effects of cannabis in helping those people as well. Absolutely, and that's actually uh, to get to the, I guess, the rest of the story, Kevin, on the question you asked me about how Operation Grow for Vets was born. Um, I have a German Shepherd pup that I take to a training facility, and I, I met an awful lot of young veterans who were there training their service dogs, most of whom had PTSD, TBI, uh, all who had chronic pain. Some have MS, some have epilepsy, uh, you know, developed later in life, um, and, you know, there's what they're getting is massive amounts of drugs from the VA. Uh, we've received over 200 emails today uh, just on our first day uh, that we launched, that we've been in, in operation since January, but we really just made it public today. Over t- I can't tell you, I mean, some of them are just heartbreaking. You know, one's a guy who, who was on 20 medications from the VA, uh, was able to use marijuana to get off all of those medications, now he feels great, but the problem is, even though he lives in Colorado, no one will hire him because he uses marijuana, but they'd be happy to hire him if he was on OxyContin or morphine. I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous. That's how screwed up the system is. I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, some people say, um, you know, especially uh, the conservative side of things, they say, marijuana is a gateway drug. Well, it sounds to me from the people that use it, medicinally that it really is a gateway off of some of these horrible drugs. People are using it as a gateway to get off of things like you know, the opiates and the morphines and things like that so that they can actually lead a healthier life. Well, and that's the point. You know, the VA's philosophy, you know, and I don't blame the doctors. I, it all comes from the, you know, from the politicians and the, and the administrators, I feel. But um, you know, their, their philosophy to me seems to be, you know, let's keep these guys in a drug-induced stupor and, you know, just hope for the best and whatever happens, happens. You know, marijuana should not be a last resort. Marijuana should be a first resort. Why give somebody drugs that could kill them is a, is a first step when you could give them something that's harmless as a first step? And if that doesn't work, you've always got the other option. Roger, walk us through a couple of uh, a couple of quick things. How many veterans are you helping right now? How many guys are a part of this? Well, again, we've we've been private until today, so the the, the actual number that we've been helping is around thirty. Uh, so we started in January, but again today, and again, I have not. Uh, this was as of about four hours ago because I've been doing television interviews and stuff, and I haven't uh, had a chance to check. But as of about, so, you know, we had over two hundred veterans sign up. Um, by 9 o'clock this morning, we put our press release out at 11 last night. By 9 this morning, we had 100. So obviously there's a need out there. You know, most of them send a little story with the sign-up. I mean, it's just it's incredible. Another guy, 60% disabled, has a young son, no wife, can't get a job, hasn't had a job in a year and a half. You know, he's trying to feed his, his young son on a 60% disability from the VA. I mean, absolutely ludicrous. And our heart goes out to those people and, and when we hear those stories. What does it take to qualify for your program? Well, to qualify, uh, right now we only operate in Colorado. You know, our legal team is working on, you know, what states we can, we can operate in legally because, as you well know, some of the marijuana laws and medical ones especially are pretty restrictive. In Colorado, we're fortunate that, that we passed a constitutional amendment, Amendment 64, which allows... Uh, a, a lot of latitude for not just what we do, but, uh, you know, what other people are allowed to do. We operate strictly under Amendment 64, not under the Colorado Cannabis Law. As a matter of fact, last week, uh, the uh, committee in the Colorado legislature voted not to put PTSD on the list of acceptable conditions for which you could get a medical marijuana card. I mean, that's how compassionless and, and what idiots you know, some of our legislators are just absolutely unbelievable, you know, and, and God forbid if someday they have a grandchild or something who has, you know, 200 epileptic seizures a day, uh, a week, and, you know, they need marijuana and they can't get it because they were one of the idiots that, that, that kept it out of people's hands. It just, it defies all logic to me, Kevin. I am uh, incredulous at that as well. Um, what is your current capacity for helping folks? 
Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a limit. I mean, I don't know what that is. Obviously, at this point, our goal is to just help everybody that we can help. You know, we're fortunate, uh, and we need more, but we're fortunate that we have people that not only get, that are giving us money, we have uh, 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 grow shops that give us equipment or sell it to us at a greatly reduced cost so we can donate it for free to vets. We have people who give us uh, marijuana. Uh, they give us oils. Mostly what we are going to distribute is in an oil form um, because it's easier to, to, to control and help the veteran decide how much they need and so on and so forth. Uh, we don't give medical advice, but we, a lot of these veterans have never done anything with marijuana, so we need to start them out very, you know, very slowly and see how it works for them because, as you well know, you know it works differently on different people. So, um, you know, we hope that we won't exceed our capacity. We will be having our first event uh, at a site yet to be determined. We're looking at several people have offered uh, the site to us to come during Memorial Day weekend is when we will actually have our first event in the Denver metro area. We'll actually distribute, uh, publicly distribute, um, oil and as well as grow equipment. Uh, and as I said, we don't just give them grow equipment if they need help setting it up, managing their garden, uh, you know, fixing problems they have with their garden. We have people that will actually go to their home, follow up, uh, you know, so that's what really makes the thing work, I think. Roger, thank you again so much for being on the show and talking to us about this, letting us know about this great work that you're doing. You are really helping our nation's heroes with the, the work that you're doing for the brave men and women of our military and uh, the veterans that really need this very crucial medicine. I really appreciate it. Your website address, could you give that to us? Yeah, the website address is www.grow, G-R-O-W, the number four, vets, V-E-T-S, dot org. I'm looking at it right now. It looks fantastic, and I wish you all the best in your mission. Roger Martin at growforvets.org. Thank you so much once again for being on the Illegally Healed podcast. Well, thank you very much. It was an honor to be on. Appreciate it, Kevin. You've been listening to the Illegally Healed podcast. Remember, your passion and dedication will make the difference in spreading the word on this critical treatment. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and online at illegallyhealed.com.